You know, the Bible says, if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, he will direct your paths and that the steps of a good man were ordered by the Lord. How wonderful it is to know you're walking in God's steps. Well, we're talking about the encounter and Ruth has been walking out a path that has led her all the way to this point where she's going to be meeting Boaz. Boaz is her future. Boaz is her destiny. Boaz represents her restoration. Boaz represents God restoring everything back that she's lost. Boaz represents her inheritance. Boaz is a type of Christ. Boaz represents her everything. And she's at the place where she's already met him, but they have not been married. And this typifies not that Jesus just wants to have random experiences with us, but he wants to walk with us on a daily basis and that everything he has be yours and that everything you are, you've committed to him. This is a wonderful, wonderful teaching on the encounter. And I want you to walk with me through her steps, the steps of her journey today and how they can be shared in your life as we talk about the encounter. When we say the patriarchs of the Bible, I'm going to teach you something new today for those of you that may not have been in the Bible long. The patriarchs of the faith, we call them Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We should be saying Abraham, Isaac, and Esau, but we don't. We say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because Jacob, his name meant trick, and he was named after his character. Jacob was a liar, a trickster, and a deceiver. And when his dad's eyes grew dim, he went and posed as Esau and got the birthright away from Esau. And once that birthright is given by the father, it is irrevocable. So he tricked the elder brother out of the birthright. And so even to this day, when we talk about the patriarchs of the faith in the Bible, we talk about Abraham, Isaac, and we talk about Jacob. But God came to Jacob in Genesis 35 and said, let me introduce you to you. You've been called to father a nation, but you have the character of a deceiver and a liar and a cheat. So we see then in Genesis 32 where God comes and in your Bible it will say, and Jacob wrestles with God. The wrestling of God. It's never to introduce you to someone else. He's trying to introduce you to you. Because you've been so busy living by who so-and-so said you were, by the crowd you want to be accepted by. Oh, I'm going over here. Y'all too holy. Y'all too holy. I'm going over here. I'm going over here to the people who need prayer. <laughs> to the names we were called, to the rejection we had from fathers or mothers, to habits that we formed in our lives, to curses that we could not break. We have all these things that have formed our character and we think that that's who we really are. But then God says, I'm so sick of Jacob, I don't know what to do. And he enters this wrestling match with you and you begin buking devils and they don't buke. You begin casting out Satan, but they ain't nothing to cast out because it ain't a devil and it ain't Satan. It is God saying, I'm not gonna let you up until you confess who you are and let me introduce you and who I have created you to be. And I prophesy and decree over this building, get ready in the next few days, not weeks, not months, but days for God to raise you up from your bed of wrestling, from your mat of fight and say, let me tell you who you really are. Remove him and wash the old things away. This is who I created you to be. Somebody shout yes. Yo, God. High five, three people say, I'm about to meet myself. I'm about to meet myself. My God, I feel something happening in this place. I'm about to meet myself. I ain't worried about your opinion no more. I'm about to meet who I'm supposed to be. Not trying to meet your expectations. Don't even really care if you like me anymore. You don't have to call me. By my new name, you can keep calling me by my old one, but I'm gonna walk right out of the shadows of yesterday because God has shown me the me that I really want to embrace. 
I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost breaking mindsets, breaking curses. Your daddy's words are falling out of your head right now. Your mama's rejection's falling off of your life right now. Your husband or wife that walked down on you and broke your heart. I see God mending your heart and putting you back together. You are entering a new day. Walk out of the old, saith God, and embrace the new. For your midnight has come. You have been between two seasons. But tonight is weeping. But tomorrow morning, joy cometh. Who am I preaching to? Y'all gotta quit. I'm about to blow a gasket. Hello, Ron. I would like to introduce you to Ron. <laughs> oh, no, not him. Not him. Come over here and look at this Ron. <clears throat> this Ron. The Bible says that those who are in Christ have an inheritance. That is why I've been taking you through the book of Ruth. And I have preached you all the way through praise, worship, favor, everything to get you to the place of inheritance. Last week, you sowed and you're going to get a harvest. I'm not talking about harvest. Because you're going to have to sow again. And you're going to have to sow again. Because harvest comes and goes. It is cyclical. Okay. I'm talking about inheritance. An inheritance is a prearranged blessing to be released at a specific time of maturity. Make sure you get that definition. That's not Webster's, that's Ron Carpenter's. An inheritance has been arranged ahead of time. It is a prearranged blessing to be released at a specific time of maturity. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to cut because we think America and Christian is the same thing. But I'm getting ready to say some things that's going to spit right in the face of American culture. Just right in the face of it. Okay? <clears throat> One of the reasons God wants you to create wealth is not for you. The Bible says that a wise man will leave an inheritance to his children's children. And if we're honest, most of us, our family didn't leave us nothing but trouble. See, y'all ain't going to say that because you're scared your grandma might see you on TV camera when they pass by. <laughs> the fact is, most of the people, under the sound of my voice, except maybe for a minute percentage, we've not been past anything but headache and trouble. God created the system to work that my kids should launch where I land. So I should put in a good 50 years of work and that should be their launching pad. They should not have to go borrow and go a gazillion dollars in debt to start a business. So I should leave them an inheritance for them to create their own life debt free. Y'all not saying nothing. You say, well, nobody did that for me. No, but you got children. And you can believe God that you're going to do that for them. I don't care if you're a single daddy. I don't care if you're a single mama. I don't care if you're 50 and starting all over. If you'll put your faith to it, God will increase you to a place where you leave this world. Your kids will look at your picture and say, let me tell you about my mama. Let me tell you about my daddy. Everything you see, I launched from what they left me. Oh, shout hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor on both sides, sit and stand and say, I want that for you. Say, I want that for you. Yo, I'm trying to calm down, but this is so good. <laughs> so the Bible says an heir, <clears throat> as long as he is a child. That Greek word is nephios, which means young and unlearned. 
Uh, Y'all saw me stop and look at it. Y'all got me nervous. Now I'm self-conscious. But I don't measure myself against you. I measure myself of my own spelling potential. yourself or you can curse yourself it's your choice how you gonna respond to a problem Judas went and committed suicide Peter repented what are you gonna do the encounter eight dynamic messages from Ron Carpenter designed to help you encounter greatness the anointing of the Holy Ghost breaking curses your daddy's words are falling out of your head right now God has got seeds of greatness and people and I'm ready for him to reign but you've got to serve God and do what your hands have been given to do with all your might I'm preaching this with such passion because some of you this is your ticket to the next level. This eight message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call in the next 10 minutes and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. And there, someone who has a prearranged blessing to be released at a specific time of maturity, as long as he is in an unlearned childish state, Though he is master of all, lives like a slave. I am. Because somebody's got to tell you the difference between position and condition. When you met Jesus... There is nothing more positionally with the Father that can be done. You have been perfected. Perfected. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are a new creation. You are a citizen of heaven. You have a new Heavenly Father, you have a new bloodline, and none of it is dependent on whether you do bad or good the next day. It happens before what Jesus did for you. That is your position in Christ. But why do we come to church, and why do we encourage getting in the Word, and why do we open up the vault with 2,300 sermons? Why do we encourage you to do all that stuff and go buy tapes and listen to this and listen to that? Because as a man thinketh, a child unlearned has conditions of bondage, even though he's master of all. Let me introduce you to the real you. Now we can talk about your conditions. But your conditions are the way they are because your mind has not caught up with. And once I can wrestle Jacob down and introduce you to Israel, then your conditions will begin to change. So it says, and an heir, as long as he's in an unlearned state, differs none from a slave, although he's master of all. That word master means Lord, kurios in the Greek, the same they use for the Lord Jesus. Said, although it's all yours, you never come into the reality of it because you compare yourself 
amongst yourself to what you did, to where you came from, to what they called you, to what they've been through, what you've been, dominates your thinking. He said, and we all as children were under the elements of the world. That word elements means indoctrination. He says, so the reason we never come in to the lordship or the ownership of what God has for us is because we've been indoctrinated by the world. This is meat. I mean, this is meat. <laughs> so we let the world tell us we're middle class. We let the world tell us we're poverty line. We let the world tell us we're middle upper. We let the world tell us well, you're, over, you're at risk. So you become what the world indoctrinated you and told you you were. And they begin to dominate your conditions because you can have a 21-year-old drug addict strung out on heroin living under a bridge whose dad is a billionaire and has left all of it to him at age 25. But at age 21, he's starving. Why? Because he's not mature enough for the inheritance to be released. With God, maturity is not calendar years. It's not 30, 35, 62, 71, or 48. With God, maturity is two things. Now this right here is where we're going to fly into the face of American culture as a whole. He said, so because this inheritance is held up because I have an unlearned, immature child who although he should be Lord of all, his conditions are like he's in bondage because he's been indoctrinated by the world. God, that's good. Preach, Ron Carpenter. Preach, boy. <laughs> Woo, I'm about to buy my own CD. Okay? He said, so here's what I got to do. I got to put them under guardians and stewards. <laughs> In America, we celebrate individuality. Nothing wrong with it, to an extent. In America, and this is a growing persona, especially which comes out of every new generation, ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. In America is the ever-increasing loss of respect for all authority on every level, starting with mom and dad going to school teachers and just go on down the line. Let me tell you something about Ron Carpenter. If they're in authority, even if I don't like them, you won't hear me speak against them. Because the Bible says that when there are authorities, they are ordained. Go home, read your Bible, Romans 13, that God raises up the good and the bad and accomplishes will through both. Yeah, I knew I was going to lose some claps, but I don't preach for claps. So we have a dilemma because that scripture tells me that God has locked my inheritance up in somebody whose instructions I have to follow. But I live in a culture that tells me rebel against everything. And I'm preaching to the world from a state whose primary root is rebellion in that it was the first to secede from the union. You live in a state born out of rebellion. The heritage is rebellion. <laughs> and so now here is God saying, your inheritance will elude you. 
and will be like sand through your fingers because you live in a culture which indoctrinates you submit to no one. But he said, I'm going to lock it up under guardians and stewards. That word guardian means tutor. Tutor means someone who sheds light or information to the unlearned. God said, I'm going to give you a voice that is more aware of your future than you are. And they will not put up with your foolishness. They are not your friend. And they will not enable your victimization. But they are so intent on getting you to your future, they will at all costs tell you the truth. And we say we want people to tell us the truth until we have somebody tell us the truth. <laughs> then he says under stewards, the word steward means a governor. It means someone who builds boundaries for the purpose of character. So God said, I have locked your inheritance up and people that will help you build character and shed light on your ignorant places. Don't get mad at ignorance. Ignorance is not stupidity. If somebody calls you stupid, get mad. Because stupid has to do with the capacity to learn. Ignorance means you just don't know. I'm ignorant of a lot of things. But I'm not stupid. So God, and see, I have these people in my life. I have these people in my life that are not impressed with me a lick. <laughs> who do not care if I ever come back. Who are not there to enable me. Who are not there to praise my accomplishments. But make me aware of what I still can be that I have not been yet. <laughs> who measure me against myself and make sure I'm constantly challenged who've made me go look in a mirror and cry. I have these people in my life. You say, well, Pastor, I don't have nobody like that. How will I find them? In the kingdom, you don't learn them. You recognize them. And when God sends them your way, you honor them. You honor them. Because your inheritance is locked up in them. So I have a prearranged blessing to be released when you become mature. And until that time, I've got somebody who's going to shed light and build your character so that the blessing can be released at the time of maturity when I introduce you to the real you and get you away from what the world has called you. Put your hands together and give God a praise. yourself or you can curse yourself it's your choice how you gonna respond to a problem Judas went and committed suicide Peter repented what are you gonna do the encounter eight dynamic messages from Ron Carpenter designed to help you encounter greatness the anointing of the Holy Ghost breaking curses your daddy's words are falling out of your head right now God has got seeds of greatness and people and I'm ready for him to reign but you've got 
to serve God and do what your hands have been given to do with all your might. I'm preaching this with such passion because some of you, this is your ticket to the next level. This eight message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call in the next 10 minutes and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Well, I hope that you have been enjoying the series. I've only been in it like a year, but we've subdivided it up into many different topics that I think are valuable to every person's life. I've really enjoyed teaching it. I just want to say a few things before we go. You know, we never have enough time, but I always have to stop and tell all the people who make this happen a great big thank you. You say, well, you've been stopping and saying thank you now ever since 1998, and I'm going to keep doing it as long as God sees fit to put me on any type of screen in front of you. Uh, it's not me alone. It's not just people running cameras and editing machines. It's people like you who believe in what we do, believe in the message of Jesus Christ and his kingdom, and you want to take it to the whole earth. You have to believe in that because that's what we are endeavoring to do. And now that we've got it into many parts of the earth, now our next stage is to take it in to many parts of the earth in people's known language and in their known tongue. It's a big expense. It's a huge undertaking. Even if I think about it sometime, it can be overwhelming, but I do believe it can be done. And you've helped us do that. You've helped us get this far. But I'm looking for new family members. I'm looking for people to help us enlarge our tent and expect our board and expand our borders. And I would love for you to consider becoming a monthly partner. And whether that be something that you want to do on an ongoing basis, or whether that be something you just want to do one time, a one-time gift, or maybe you want to become a part of this wonderful family called Redemption and Ron Carpenter Ministries, wherever you are and whoever you are, I want you to know we would love to embrace you and love for you to become our circle of friends. I need your prayerful support. Could, need, could use your financial support. And just knowing that there are people out there who believe in what we're doing. For whatever your first time gift would be, whatever God puts in your heart, we're gonna send you this very special offer just to say thank you for being a friend of this ministry because we are truly grateful. I wanna see you on Twitter and on Facebook and on Instagram because I only get to see you so much on TV, but right there I'm talking all the time. And sometimes it's even interactive. Sometimes I pray, sometimes I prophesy, sometimes I drop just a word of wisdom, a nugget that may, that may be the very thing you need to hear at that time in your day. So I would love for you to join me there. And not only that, but go check out our website, roncarpenter.com. I always got something going on, itinerary, where I'm going to be, and I'd love to see you in any particular place. I just want to speak a big God bless you over your life and just thank you for all you do. Until next time, blessings be with you. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, and we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.